Hello, this is Dino Patijalal. I'm the founder of Foreign Policy Community of Indonesia. Today's uh, foreign policy tape session is about ASEAN Charter. Uh, as we all know, you know, the ASEAN Charter, which was uh, concluded in 2008 and ratified in 2009, was a seminal moment for ASEAN, uh, both as an organization, uh, but also uh, politically and also uh, historically. Uh, ASEAN moved to the next level uh, with the founding of the ASEAN Charter. And to discuss uh, the process of ASEAN Charter, the insights and the evolving positions uh, of Indonesia and also other ASEAN countries, we are very happy and fortunate to have with us Hassan Wirayuda, who is the Indonesian Foreign Minister at the time. Uh, he was more than just a foreign minister. He was the intellectually uh, someone who pushed many of the changes uh, that we found in, in ASEAN uh, Charter. We are very happy that we have pa Hassan here, uh, while he's uh, still have his fresh recollection of what happened in those days. So thank you, Pak Hassan, for joining us thank today. Thank you, know. Yeah, let me, let me uh, begin with the question of uh, what was the international and regional world background that prompted for uh, the need to have uh, uh, the ASEAN Charter and uh, the need to transform ASEAN? Well, ASEAN, at the larger East Asia was in the midst of a severe crisis. We know then, started in 1997, an East Asia monetary crisis started in South Korea, then spread to Hong Kong, Thailand, Malaysia, Philippines, and Indonesia. It took a crisis to change. Mm -hmm. but that's perhaps that's human. Mm -hmm. uh, against the backgrounds of this crisis that at the ASEAN summit hosted by Singapore in 2001. Uh, Singapore, then Prime Minister Goh Chok Tong proposed ASEAN to establish an ASEAN uh, economic community. He said that uh, ASEAN lost its competitiveness and he gave an example, which I remember vividly, that all foreign direct investment that came to ASEAN 85% went to China. Mm -hmm. Even question whether the re remaining 15% came to ASEAN. Mm -hmm. That's the, the degree of what ASEAN was mm -hmm. in the uh, crisis that affected East Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, the ASEAN leaders did not decide about this proposal, but rather to establish a group to study it. You know, in diplomacy, to study means you may study forever. Mm -hmm. But I see the merit mm -hmm. of the Singapore proposal, mm -hmm. uh, provided that the concept of, a new concept of ASEAN community must be balanced. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to have only an ASEAN community. It was against, I mean, uh, uh, against the backgrounds of our own experience, national experience in Indonesia. To me, Indonesian, national development concept was in balance, mm -hmm. heavily economics, mm -hmm. and political development for so long was neglected. Mm -hmm. That's why by a stroke of monetary crisis, we were near collapse. Mm -hmm. We were on the verge of collapse mm -hmm. by end of 1997, mm -hmm. early 98. <coughs> so that's why by around April uh, 2002, I proposed that an ASEAN security community must be established in parallel mm -hmm. with the ASEAN economic community proposed by Singapore. Mm -hmm. Core values of this ASEAN security community, which later on called ASEAN political and security mm -hmm. for, uh, community, focus on promotion of democracy, uh, rule of law and greater respect for human rights, uh, but also good governance and peaceful conflict resolutions. Of course, it's very controversial in nature, understanding Ambitious. The, <laughs> uh, understanding the, the compo you look at the composition of ASEAN. Exactly. Countries which comprise of countries of democracy, quasi-democracy, but also 
uh, socialist systems, yeah, yeah. socialist, communist, and mm -hmm. military junta. Mm -hmm. uh, so controversial uh, that I would quote uh, Professor Jürgen Haas from the London School of Economics. Mm -hmm. In his article, said by proposing this ASEAN uh, uh, security community, Indonesia was playing a hegemonic role mm -hmm. and bullying other ASEAN countries. I met with him later on at of lunch in London mm -hmm. and explained that we have no slight intention to play a hegemonic role nor to bully other ASEAN. We were simply to see that the process of integrations, process of uh, ASEAN communities must be balanced because we had the experience at the national level when, when the development concept which was adopted by the new order government, a military dominated government under President Suharto, because of the, its imbalance, uh, in the end we were, mm -hmm. with a stroke of monetary crisis, we were almost collapsed, as I said earlier. So, but of course, the controversial nature of this did not prevent us to uh, move forward. Uh, through the process of dialogue and consultations, we were able to, in the end, only one year later, at the ASEAN summit, ASEAN agree by consensus to elevate, to transform ASEAN from rather loose associations based on Bangkok declaration into an ASEAN community. So that's the beauty of consensus. Do you yes. mind if I ask the, 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 the concept of democracy as was enunciated at the time, was it clearly defined or was it left vague? Uh, what democracy and freedom or human rights was? So that when you combine mm -hmm. democracy and human rights, mm -hmm. it was clear to everyone what it was, yeah. What it was, yeah. including for non-democratic governments mm -hmm. in ASEAN. Mm -hmm. So, and, and for 36 years of ASEAN, it was taboo to introduce yes. new mm -hmm. ideas, mm -hmm. uh, controversial ideas like democracy and human rights, but of all on ASEAN economic community. That's why my senior, mm -hmm. minutes Ali, former Foreign Minister Alatas, uh, asked to meet me and the first sentence that came from his was Hassan are you sure you're going to talk about promotion and democracy mm. and human rights in ASEAN I said yes mm. this was my firm <laughs> uh, response mm. uh, thanks to God uh, only one year and a half at this summit in Bali chaired by President Megawati, we all ASEAN agreed on this. So it took five years to translate these big ideas into a charter, as you. Mm -hmm. uh, charter is basically, uh, was meant to give a strong legal foundations uh, from of, of this transformation process. Uh, we recall that the ASEAN was established by simply a declaration, non-binding documents, mm -hmm. with limited purposes, economic cooperation, scientific cooperation, and but political insecurity. Mm -hmm. we, we, we somewhat shy to mention it. But here we have new community uh, complete with its three pillars, political and security, economic, community as well as socio-cultural community. So we need a stronger ASEAN. That's mm -hmm. why the very foundation of ASEAN, the very basis must be in a treaty base mm -hmm. rather than a declarations. Mm -hmm. That's why as a follow-up of this Bali summit de decisions, adopting the concept of ASEAN community, then we prepare uh, ASEAN Charter, the new structure of ASEAN Secretariat, the new mandate for Secretary General, etc. So, and of course, the the, the devil is in the detail. Mm -hmm. While there was basic agreements, but when we drafted the Charter in 99, rather in 2000, 
seven, 2007, 2008, we, we have uh, also problems. Uh, and, and, and I would mention, for example, on one or two. Uh, when we drafted the ASEAN Charter, Article 14, it's often called in the enabling provision on ASEAN human rights body. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, there was, there was a disagreement at the senior official levels. That's why the, uh, the, the, the problem was then discussed at the foreign minister. I remember that uh, at the foreign minister's meeting in Manila in 2007, mm -hmm. practically, you know the sensitivities of ASEAN when we talk about human rights. Mm -hmm. It was only Indonesia. Mm -hmm. That's again the beauty of uh, consensus is in making. Mm -hmm. uh, if it was voted, I believe that Indonesia would be simply easily voted out by mm -hmm. once against nine or at least mm -hmm. two against eight. Mm -hmm. uh, but also one of the lengthy deliberations, mm -hmm. but in the end it was agreed by consensus that ASEAN must have a human rights body. Mm -hmm. Likewise, on the consensus decision making, uh, there are those who wish to review because the decision making mode by consensus is uh, cumbersome, it took a uh, long time to conclude, but to me, it is the strength of ASEAN. Mm -hmm. You remember, Padino, you know, that when mm -hmm. uh, we were about to ratify the ASEAN Charter, there was objection. In fact, I would mm -hmm. say our mm -hmm. friends from the CSI strongly objected mm -hmm. uh, Indonesia to ratify. Why? Because the Charter maintained the mode of decision making by consensus. Mm -hmm. uh, likewise, when at the Indonesian Parliament at DPR, s elements of those who wa wish to reject mm -hmm. argued that why the new ASEAN Charter maintain this old concept of consensus okay. decision making. My mm -hmm. arguments, mm -hmm. uh, their argument was that it's cumbersome, it is slow, and leads to the lowest common denom denominator. Mm -hmm. I said, had all those Charter provision decided by voting on some, at least, some crucial issue of interest for Indonesia would be voted out. Mm -hmm. But it was thanks to the uh, decision making by consensus. And on the argument that consensus is leading to the lowest common denominator, mm -hmm. said, who can say the promotion of democracy and human rights are the lowest common denominator? Mm -hmm. It is a universal value which. Mm -hmm many uh, majority of states mm -hmm. have been uh, uh, adopting. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think uh, certainly a good lesson that we have for everyone. Mm -hmm. and, and then I would say that uh, consensus decision making is also strength mm -hmm. uh, of ASEAN. And it would prevent uh, a Brexit uh, type of, of situation uh, for, for, for ASEAN. In a way, yes. Yeah, yeah. Another thing which, when you mention Brexit, that in that process we have a eminent person groups. Palatas yeah. was there, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, also fa fo former president of the Philippines, General uh, Fidel Ramos. Mm -hmm. Fidel Ramos actually proposed that uh, at the ASEAN Charter, there's clear reference that the next step of the ASEAN community is ASEAN Union. Mm -hmm. I was the one who argued that better not to mention it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, the founding fathers of ASEAN, when they established ASEAN in 1967, I don't think they visualized that at one point in the ASEAN will be transformed from rather loose association into community. So Supra leave it open. Supranational, uh, yeah, yeah, Not yeah. to mention <laughs> that, looking back now, yeah. it was a good decision yes. that the ASEAN Charter didn't doesn't mention at all about the next step after the community, meaning mm. the union, because look at the union. Mm -hmm. Brexit is one example that also other cases in which EU now has quite a number of problems here. Yeah.